Hello there again and welcome to the video you've probably all been looking for as the first one to view is the top 10 issues we at Ashanti believe are going to come up in the Grapple MCS exam in November 2018. Now let's kick things off straight away and discuss how we choose our top 10. Now first and foremost is the focus in the pre-scene, how much space is devoted to it, and the degree of importance attached to it by the examiner in both the pre-scene and how they like to test students in general and that comes as part of our experience as well with the exam. On top of this, the strategic importance such as the opportunities in part of the SWOT, that's obviously going to have a number of issues because opportunities are typically where a lot of questions are going to come from as well as threats and also the importance likely to be attached by directors in terms of the interests of the business and where they want to be strategically. And again, as mentioned, the experience at Astranti with myself and colleagues, we have a number of experience, experiences rather with the past exams, the typical issues, and also how easy it is for the examiner, SEMA, to write these kinds of issues on a subject because they don't want to make their lives hard either. So, Let's get straight on to how to prepare. You want to prepare the key models from all the pre-scene information. You want to remember to adapt all those new models for new points in the unseen. You can't just prepare it with the pre-scene and expect that to fly always. If there's unseen material, you must be able to adapt those models on the fly. Adaptability is key. Also, you then want to practice your mock exams that cover these key issues then find some real life examples to prepare sample paragraphs, learn them, and then integrate them. You also obviously want to learn the typical key points such as the advantages and disadvantages of a given action on an issue. And you want to make sure that you know which models should be applied to which issue. And these can be more easily understood via the strategic analysis video, but they will of course be referenced here as well. So, Let's get straight into the actual issues now. The number 10, we have ethics and CSR. Now, the reason it's super important, of course, is branding is paramount. Now, when branding is important, typically the way you portray the company is super important as well. And this is where ethics and CSR comes in. Now, the reason we chose this one, of course, at first is that it appears in most variants. This might sound kind of absurd, but actually... It just comes up so often. And also SEMA, to present themselves as ethical, wish to test people on ethics themselves because it helps them, you know, promote ethics and then as, the, as such rather be seen as an ethical company themselves. So in terms of the pre-scene, we have the staff importance to production and quality checking, which is paramount, of course. So annoying or demoralizing staff is not going to work well for production. Also, automation comes into it in terms of it could provide the company with possible redundancies or reshuffling, and that could harm morale, which then has implications on the learning curve theory and how efficiently production then goes on because staff won't be as happy and motivated as before. So what's some likely issues on ethics? Well, it could range from bribing government officials on certain contracts going ahead, maybe a merger or acquisition. That's pretty you know, wild, but it could happen. Treatment of suppliers, very key to this issue because we have you know, a number of suppliers and we wanna treat them in an ethical way as well as offer you know, fair prices, that kind of thing. And also how we advertise could come into that as well in terms of our ethical sort of targeting of consumers. Then we have pollution, governance, and confidentiality. In regards to governance, this would only occur if the unseen material implies an IPO, because governance isn't a requisite until you are listed on the stock exchange. So unless a listing were to occur, governance is going to be kind of that issue that doesn't really crop up. But I suspect that a listing will be in one of the variants at the very least. So, what do you need to talk about? 
Well, SEMA want you to always take the moral high ground and take action from an ethical perspective. So you always have to make a recommendation with any question, but in this case with ethics, you want to have a short-term solution, such as a change of procedure, but also a long-term, such as investing in a given sort of project or uh, practice that will mean that you can have more training, for example, and ensure that ethics is carried out in the long term. Now, importantly, this may sound cheesy, but SEMA genuinely want you to say good ethics is just the right thing to do. That's quite a sort of simple point to say, but in these kinds of questions, that's exactly what they want to hear. So the theory you can use is SEMA's ethical principles. That's integrity, confidentiality, professional behavior, that kind of thing. And also in the recent examiner's report, the examiner said that you could almost always use this model when answering ethical questions. So please learn it, use it, and you'll score some easy, easy marks on ethical questions. You can also use the American Accounting Association Resolution Model, though you don't need to actually learn it. It's just the key headings can be some solutions. And also, again, let me re-emphasize this. Please, please, please use the phrase it is simply the right thing to do. That will save you so many marks, even though it sounds rather silly in like a raw sense of the sense, raw sense, sorry. So anyway, issue nine, risk management. Another generic one that comes up a whole lot. It's a key P2 topic, risk identification, management techniques, mapping and controls. It's always, always examined. So again, it usually sneaks into the top 10. Not always, but usually. So what are some likely issues? Identifying key risks, for example. So a key risk could be additional sugar taxes, as we may know from the industry pack and the precinct videos throughout basically the whole case. This additional regulation can be a key point, and that's a risk to the business in terms of how it adds costs. Also, Another sort of risk management aspect could be on a project or for the whole organization based on risks in the pre scene, such as additional regulation, damage to brand reputation, that kind of thing. And finally, you want to talk about how risk should be managed in the pre scene company, the methodology, the role of an audit committee if they're listed. So there is a possibility that you get a question, an exam variant rather, that has question one about listing and question two about risk management. And also you can bring in culture from E2 to discuss how you can build a culture within the company that is inherently managing risks by default via procedures and just the way people think. What are the key points then? Health and safety, of course, is a big risk always in any production line competition as well as external, how big carnival and party pops are, a pretty big deal. And also we should be talking about quality control. If that goes wrong, suddenly the differentiation strategy goes out the window. Now you should also talk about, and I apologize that it is cut off a little bit by this image, the importance of the embedded risk methodology. Now what this essentially means is that you're aiming to have an embedded risk management kind of ideals in the company as a culture already so that you're sort of passively managing risks without actually having procedures or policies they're just a thing that happens so it's about encouraging the right kind of practice rather than actually setting policies that force people to do it and also the importance of risk management at the management level it's super, super important to think about that because your role as a manager is to monitor and then report. So risk management is one of those key factors in monitoring and reporting. So again, make sure you mention how important it is to a management level student or accountant rather. And finally, of course, how do you control risk? Answer the question. How do you explain that this risk will be mitigated by the recommended action that you've proposed? And if you can, it's good to use a real life example. Now, theories you can use is the COSO risk methodology, the TARA framework, transfer, accept, reduce, avoid, and of course, risk mapping, the impact and the likelihood. And finally, if you do happen to have a variant that pairs up listings 
with a follow-up risk management question, an audit committee could be a thing also. Hello, it's me again. I just wanted to take a few minutes of your time to first extend my hope that you enjoyed the free sample that you've just viewed, but also to just sort of explain what else the strategy do to help you pass your exam really effectively, provided you found our sample particularly interesting and insightful, of course. So, of course, we have a study text for every module, ranging from P1 to F3, and the certificate level is also free on our website. So we have study texts throughout the SEMA course, every module you could hope to study. The certificate level are free, as I mentioned, and then the rest of them, ranging from P1 to F3, are all available to purchase. Alongside this, if you're not so much a study text kind of student and you prefer a visual way of learning, we have the course videos. We essentially break down the study text into bite-sized presentations with a walkthrough and it's, it's a very, very, very engaging way of explaining the course. Following this, we have the pre-scene analysis where we break down each pre-scene sitting into a number of videos going through the whole document but also adding a top 10 recommendations for what will come up in the exam and also a strategic analysis where we put all the models you'd find in E2 for example to the pre-scene itself whichever that may be at the time. Alongside this we provide an industry analysis. This is a document and accompanying video which help you give that contextual information in your exam. So for example if the pre scenes on the oil industry, the industry analysis will break down the oil industry, the current topics, trends, issues, what the competitive market looks like, all those kind of aspects, all condensed into one so you can spend your time wisely in your study period. Following on from this, when you actually want to practice all this knowledge, we have mock exams for all of our materials. So StudyTex has a generic mock exam based on the module whereas the pre-scene analysis has mocks available to purchase that are based on that specific pre-scene that are targeted to the key issues we believe will come up. And if you're not content with just doing those mock exams and practicing that way, we have a marking and feedback system where you can purchase the ability to send in your paper, have it marked by a SEMA qualified accountant and get personalized feedback by on whether you can improve X or Y area. And sort of finally, if you will, if you're feeling really underprepared and that exam is coming really, really soon, the master classes are offered by Astranti and they're essentially a crash course in anything you could want for that topic. So if it's a master class on the pre scene, it's going to give you absolutely everything that you could possibly need to know about the pre scene in one in one rather really condensed sitting. Likewise, if it was the F3 masterclass, you would have all of F3 gone through in a very crash course style presentation and video link. You can also purchase it post stream as opposed to viewing it live, all these kind of aspects. We are very, very confident that these materials will help you get the exam success that you want. So we have a pass guarantee. Provided you fill out a form which demonstrates that you have utilized our materials to a large extent, and actually taken the time to study them, and you have unfortunately failed, we will offer you the same materials again for the next sitting as in a consolidatory offer to ensure that you can get back on the horse and get that exam grade that you want. With that said, Thank you very much for watching the sample video. I hope you enjoyed it and it gives you a lot of confidence in Astranti and your SEMA future.